Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We extend a special welcome to everyone who is joining us today. The Mass intentions for Saturday, September 12th at the 5 o'clock Mass. Along with your own intentions, let us remember in prayer Michel Nadon, requested by the family. The Mass intentions for Sunday, September 13th at the 9 a.m. Mass. Mary Young Lai, requested by the family. For deceased members of the Hart and McAvoy families, requested by the family. For the intentions of Simon Chan, requested by his mother, Helen Chan. And the Mass intention for Sunday, September 13th at 11 o'clock is for our parish community. Please join me in prayer to our patron, St. Martin de Porres. St. Martin de Porres, you are the most holy patron of our parish. Be with us, your people, as we prayerfully journey together as the people of God. Help us to rediscover the richness and depth of our faith. Help our parish and school family grow together as a community of faith in which we share your love with one another. Grant us growth in faith as we strive to live Christian community in our homes, in our parish, in our schools, and in our world. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now our opening hymn, We Will Rise Again. Like a shepherd, I will feed you, I will gather you with care. I will lead you and hold you close to my heart. We will run and not grow weary, for our God will be our strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries worthily, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, the God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Anger and wrath, these are abominations, yet a sinner holds on to them. The vengeful person will face the Lord's vengeance, for he keeps a strict account of their sins. Forgive your neighbor the wrong that is done, and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray. Does anyone harbor anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? If one has no mercy toward another one like oneself, can one then seek pardon for one's own sins? If one who is but flesh harbors wrath, who will make an atoning sacrifice for that person's sins? Remember the end of your life and set enmity aside. Remember corruption and death, and be true to the commandments. Remember the commandments, and do not be angry with your neighbor. Remember the covenant of the Most High, and overlook faults. The Word of the Lord. The response to the psalm the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. It is the Lord who forgives all your inequity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. 
who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our inequities. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we do not live to ourselves and we do, do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I give you a new commandment, love one another just as I have loved you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, how often should I forgive my brothers or sisters if they sin against me? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. The Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seized him by the throat and said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slaves fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience on me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then this Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you have not had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? 
And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brothers or sisters from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, our interpersonal relationship is important if there will be peace and love in the community. Last Sunday, Jesus spoke about the importance of fraternal correction. In today's Gospel, which is a continuation of last Sunday's reading, Jesus emphasizes with a parable the importance of forgiveness in our relationship with our fellow human beings and with God. But before we continue, allow me to ask this question. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is a cancellation of debt what is forgiven is cancelled so that no reference is made to it again. I often hear people say, I can forgive but I cannot forget. Does not, this does not express the nature of forgiveness. A Christian forgives and forgets. Forgiveness is starting afresh. Forgiveness is opening a new page. Forgiveness is a fresh beginning. If such is the case, then I have forgiven you, but I don't want to do anything with you again does not show real forgiveness. Without this desire or disposition to begin again, there is no forgiveness. Forgiveness is not based on merit. Christian forgives without precondition. If we wait for the offender to merit our forgiveness, then it is no longer a gift, but an exchange. It is because the offender does not deserve it, that is why it is a gift. If he deserves it, it is no longer forgiveness. Forgiveness is not based on logic or on strict right or on merit but on compassion and that is where we resemble God who does not treat us according to our sins as we can read in Psalm 103 verse 10 or you read the chapter the gospel of Saint Matthew chapter 5 verses 43 to 45 so to err is human but to forgive is divine finally forgiveness has no limit it is not a nature of quantity but quality 
And this is the lesson of today's gospel. The unforgiving servant. In olden days in the Jewish tradition, the rabbis taught that God forgives us three times and then punishes us the fourth time one offense. If you read the, the, the book of Amos, chapter 1, verses 3, 6, and 9, then you will see what is obtainable or what was obtainable in the olden law. And no one is expected to be more forgiving than God. Wanting to be gracious in today's gospel, we saw the servant, unforgiving servant. But you remember one Sunday when Peter was asking Jesus Christ, How many times will I, will I forgive my brother or my sister? And then Peter was wanting to double that, that law of forgiving three times. He doubled it. And then add one, making it seven. He said seven times. Jesus Christ turned to him and said, Peter, it is not seven times, but seventy times seven, which is 490 times in all this Jesus reversed the old law of vengeance as we read in the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 24 just as the old law in the old law there was no limit to hatred and vengeance so among Christians Jesus Christ is asking us that there is, there is to be no limits to mercy and forgiveness. As we read in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, verse 4. In the Jewish tradition, seven times is the fullness of number. Then, 70 times 7, recommended by Jesus, simply means that you cannot forgive for 490 times without forgiveness being part of your habits structure. There is no limit to the number and offense we are expected to forgive. This is the point in the contrast between the two deaths. The unforgiving servant owed 10,000 talents, while the other one owed only 100 denarii. A single talent was the largest units of money known in the Near East time. And 10,000 talents, the largest number. So 10,000 talents will be equivalent to our, one, our billions and of dollars and pounds. A talent is worth more than 15 years wages of a laborer. So assuming the laborer gets work every day, he needs to live and work 100, for 150,000 years every day in order to earn 10,000 talents and never spend any of it in order to be able to pay. The master forgave all that. But he could not forgive one who owed him a hundred denarii. A denarius is equivalent to four pence and was the usual day's work wages for a laborer. As we can see in the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 2, chapter 20, verse 2. 100 denarii is less than 
ten dollars or five pounds and it is one over five hundred thousand of what he owed ten thousand talents whatever offense someone commits against us is a small is as small as hundred denarii when compared to what we commit against God ten thousand talents if God forgives us we have no reason not to forgive others forgive one another for God has forgiven you in Christ as St. Paul tells us it is failure unwillingness and inability to forgive that leads to vengeance and the first reading says that the vengeful will face the vengeance of the Lord book of Sirach chapter 28 verse 1 there will be judgment without mercy for those who are not merciful themselves let us in James chapter 2 verse 13 and in St. In, 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 in in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 7, he says, Blessed are ye at the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. He who refuses to forgive will not obtain forgiveness from God. Remember, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 12, we pray, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And in the book of Sirach, chapter 28, verse 2, he says, Forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done, and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray. My dear brothers and sisters, for if forgiveness, if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 to 15. Therefore today, my brothers and sisters, anyone who refuses to forgive is like someone who cuts the bridge through which he can go to heaven. Without forgiveness, there is no love. And without love, there is no Christianity. May the Lord give us the grace to forgive and forget so that there will be peace and love in our community, in our family, in our town, and in our place of work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. And He sent Him into hell, and on the third day He rose again from the dead. He sent Him into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, Forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and life everlasting. Trusting in God's mercy and compassion, we offer our prayers and petitions. For the church, may the Lord bless her and keep her safe from all evil, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For harmony and justice in our nation and across the world, may the Prince of Peace dwell in the hearts of all. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, especially those in our parish who have been crushed in our prayers, may the Lord grant them healing and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students, teachers, education workers, as they return to school this month, we pray that God in his mercy will bless and protect them from the coronavirus during this time of pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially those who have no one to pray for them, may they know the loving embrace of our merciful Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy and compassion, Look beyond our sins and hear the prayers we offer you with contrite and repentant hearts. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. I accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, Grant us unfailing obedience to your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a few sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood 
of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance which we elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Martin the poorest, our patron saint, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence will rely from failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servants. Francis our Pope, and Terence our Bishop, Marcella our Coadjutor Bishop, the other our bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our brothers, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who we are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, and that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of God's peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, says the Lord. And I now invite you to join us in receiving your own Holy Communion spiritually. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanks to you, here every moment thine, O sacrament most holy. All praise and all thanks to you. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you and those you love in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God, and you have a very lovely day.
Our closing hymn today is I Believe in God. Oh